One hour of content you may have missed in Black Ops 1 Zombies, let's go. Kino der Toten has plenty of easter eggs and lore just scattered throughout the map and a lot of it goes unnoticed. But one of my favorite little easter eggs that a lot of people might know about is the bleeding mannequin easter egg. If you come to the dressing room and you shoot at this mannequin's heart, blood will start spurting out and it will start bleeding. There's really no significance to this whatsoever, but for some reason I always have to shoot it every time I come past it. It's just a nice little funny easter egg that literally does nothing. And also going unnoticed might be that these mannequins have 1942 written on their necks and also on their hips. Now if you saw my previous video, you might recognize a note very very similar to this. There was a letter similar to this located on Doris. And this one was also sent via the Industry Global Communications Service. And it is from IHCOMFSOG. And it is sent to FSER, which could be Faithful Servant Edward Richthofen, but because of the message, possibly not. And the message was sent on January 23rd, 1975. And it reads, We have listed both Tabin and Saren. Be wary of the doctor. His involvement should be minimalized if you want to make it out alive. We are unsure on how we arrived at this time and place. Do what you must. Now this note can be found all over Kino der Toten, but one of the locations that I like the most is behind the door that shall not be opened, underneath the stairs located on top of the box. You can also find it in Pack-a-Punch and in the Pentagon room that you teleport to. This note is not that hard to find. It's located everywhere. Next, if you come over here on Kino and you come up to this wall right here and you listen very, very closely, you can hear today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. And Raid Shadow Legends has recently celebrated their fourth anniversary. And I thought with that, let's take a look down memory lane and just see how far me and Raid have come. Raid Shadow Legends, one of the greatest, one of the greatest turn-based RPGs known to man. Now, you might be asking, fuck. If you really wanted to play Raid Shadow Legends, you can either play it on your laptop and or on your cellular device. Yeah, Raid just keeps getting better and better, and I haven't really changed much other than the fact that I'm bigger than a house. Not much has changed. But very similar to me, Raid is getting bigger and bigger with one of its most requested features, Live PvP Arena. Raid's letting you go mano a mano against other players, picking and banning champions before the duel, all to determine who is superior. And also you can get some pretty cool rewards, new artifact sets, fragments for legendary champions, and special Live Arena crests that unlock powerful new bonuses at the Great Hall. So what are you waiting for? Use my QR code that is on screen right now to get tons of extra stuff. And if you use my QR code, you can get an epic champion, Knight Errant, and some other pretty useful things like energy refills, skill tombs, and XP boosters. So look for the name Crazy Rabbit and hit that link up in the description and go play Raid right now. Now, a lot of people might not know about the rocket Easter egg in Kino der Toten. And honestly, I'm calling it. This is the main Easter egg in Kino der Toten. All you have to do is collect all the film reels and activate the radios and you can launch the rocket. So after you go to Pack-a-Punch, when you teleport back before you go to spawn, you'll usually get sent to a room. You'll get sent to Samantha's good and or bad room. You'll get sent to the dentist office and or the conference room. And there's going to be three film reels that you have to grab. And once you grab them, you have to place each one into the projectors. The test subjects have been undergoing treatment for five days with little progress. I have been assured that given time, the programming will take hold. In the past weeks, we have made great strides in breaking through to their subconscious. I have had the projectionist make edits to the film. These changes have been very effective. Subject 26 has had a breakthrough. He is responding to the treatment and following basic instructions. The violent outbursts have been greatly reduced. And given time, we feel this method of treatment will be 100% effective in most cases. And after you've activated all three reels, you're going to want to activate two of the radios. One is located in the chandelier in the giant theater room. All you have to do is look up and shoot it. Our timeline for deployment can be accelerated. Given the progress we have made in the past two weeks, if patient 26 can retain the impressions longer than 26 hours, we will have the process perfect. And the next one is located outside the map near Double Tap. If you look through this barricade right here, you will see it in the guard tower located on top. All you have to do is shoot it. Another setback. Patient 26 was killed this month in the field test. He lost control and attacked one of our handlers. His injuries were minor, but patient 26 was destroyed. The break in programming coincided with the flashing lights and loud noises of the fire alarm the test facility. One moment. What is it? 
And once you have done all that, you want to go back to Pack Punch and hope to God it takes you to the conference room. And once it does, you go right up to the rocket, hold the interact button, and the rocket takes off. And this does next to nothing. But it still is pretty freaking cool, especially considering back in the day, we didn't know about Ascension, and Ascension was the first DLC. So this was like a little hint on what to expect with the first DLC. Now in Zombies, there are tons of just unsolved mysteries and lore and theories and Easter eggs. There are a lot. And one of the ones that bugs me the most is Manhattan Down. If you come up to this room in Kino de Toad, you can see on the ground there are letters, and the letters spell out Manhattan Down. And this is not the only time we see that phrase. When you also load up zombies, sometimes you can see in the corner where it gives you the little tips and tricks, you can also see Manhattan Down. And to this day, as far as I'm aware, we really never got a 100% explanation on what this phrase means. If you happen to know what this means for 100% certainty and you have proof, please let me know down there below in the comments. Because if this was like explained in like a more recent Call of Duty, I, I might not know. Now, if there's one thing that used to have a pretty big impact on the zombie storyline back in the day, it was the Illuminati. And the Eye of Providence, which is pretty much the Illuminati's go-to mascot, can be found in certain sections of the map. Similar to where we found that letter from earlier, underneath the stairs, on the side of the box, you can see the Illuminati's logo. And the next one is a little bit more hidden. It's outside of the map. It's in a zombie's barrier, and it's in a book. So if you look through this barrier on top of the book, you can actually see the eye, and it's just a torn up piece of paper that kind of looks like it's being used as a bookmark. And it really sucks that the Illuminati kind of got axed, pretty early on because I was always a huge fan of it back in the day in World of War and Black Ops 1. I always thought it was super interesting, but unfortunately they just ended up axing it. Now, do you guys remember the sinking brick Easter egg in World of War? Well, that very same note that we got in Darius can also be found in Kino der Toten. In the conference slash Pentagon room that you go to after Pack-a-Punching, you can find that note located right here on the wall. But did you know there's also a second location that you can find this note outside of the map in the zombies barrier located right here on the table. You can also find that very same note. I always like little throwbacks and easter eggs to previous maps. I don't know why. Call me nostalgic. Now one thing that I love about Kino der Toten is that the damned theme is just always playing in the background and I just absolutely love that. I, well, number one, the damned theme is amazing and just fits with zombies so well. And number two, it really, in my opinion, adds to the whole aesthetic of Kino der Toten. It just fits so well with this map and there's never a point where I'm like, oh, it's playing like you really only hear it when there's nothing going on like when a new round would happen to be beginning or you have a crawler so it doesn't like drown out the entire experience but it's there when you need it Now, right next to where we saw that note earlier in the theater room, there's also a, another note, which is Ignomo Jubilius. And it seems everyone seems to unanimously agree that this either translates to a disgrace's joy or laughable mistake. And this might have just been a translation error when they were translating this, because I've seen a bunch of people say that this really doesn't make any sense with how it's translated, because certain words don't exist and don't mean what they should. I don't know. I'm not smart. I'm just giving you guys the information. Now, when you go to the pack punch room, there's going to be a chalkboard. And on that chalkboard, there are plenty of little scribbles and pictures and equations. And some of them read experiment 935 was successful. Everything can be based off this model. The German word for black sun 114 UUQ 115 UUP. Tomorrow, the project will move into full production. I know it was you, Richthofen, help and energy momentum. And a lot of this stuff is just very, very similar to the chalkboards from Doris. And also in the pack punch room, there is a bulletin board that reads when translated to hold on men, we'll finish them. And underneath that message, it also translates to yes, yes, sure. And also in the pack of punch room, there is a little desk that has Maxis's nameplate that you also can see in Doris, some element 115, and a lot of the same posters that we saw in World of War of the Hellhounds and the zombies. Have you ever wondered what the sign in the alleyway reads? Well, it translates to a German sun cinema. Now, all around Kino der Toten, there are just tons of chalk writings. And probably the most known one is the Beware of the Six, which pretty obviously means Beware of, like, Nova Six. But back in the day, I remember people telling me that this meant Beware of Round Six because that's when dogs spawn in. But that's just not true because dogs can spawn in on a couple other rounds. But at this point, I'm pretty sure we all know that Beware of Six kind of referenced to Nova Six Crawlers. 
There is also some chalk that reads brimstone to damnation. Fire and brimstone is an expression of God's wrath in the Bible. In Genesis 19, God destroys the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah with a rainfall of fire and brimstone. And funny enough, brimstone is also another name for element 16, which is sulfur, which is also one of the three components that were used to create Nova 6. Behind the projector, you can make out the words Ether Projectionist. The first word is written in the Illuminati language, so you have to decode it, which I did not do. And it's pretty funny because in the Wii version, this says JRP Projectionist instead. And we also have the usual knowledge itself is for the taking and my personal favorite, Samantha, Amelia, Abigail, and JD. And as far as I am aware, we have never solved what these names mean. We know who Samantha is. Abigail could possibly be Misty. But who is Amelia? I don't think in the history of Call of Duty Zombies, we have ever actually solved this, I don't think. And my personal theory is that because it says JD right there, and that stands for JD2020, who was the community manager at the time, I'm taking a shot in the dark here that these girls are also probably daughters of some of the people that made zombies. And just as a little Easter egg, they decided to throw their names on the wall. I am calling that right now. If that turns out to be true, I want it known that I was the one that solved it. Now, have you ever wondered what the movie posters located around Keynote or Toten are? Well, you're in luck. Let's get into it. So one of the ones that you can see is Die Bismarck. Which, if you don't know, Bismarck was one of the first of the two Bismarck-class battleships for the German Kriegsmarine at the time. And it was named after Chancellor Otto von Bismarck, who was the primary force behind the unification of Germany in 1871. And the Bismarck did not reach a very happy ending. It ended up getting destroyed by the British and sunk with a heavy loss of life. And this poster seems to be oddly similar to the Sink the Bismarck movie which was made back in the 1960s. The other movie poster that you see throughout the map is called Faust. And on it it says Duke of Pharma, Faust, who is the main character, Gretchen, Archangel, and Mephisto. And Faust is the protagonist of a classic German legend. He is a scholar who is highly successful yet dissatisfied with life. So he makes a pact with the devil, exchanging his soul for unlimited knowledge and worldly pleasures. And this has been a basis for many literary, artistic, and cinematic, and musical works throughout like the rest of time. And the last poster that you see is this one, not even going to try to pronounce it. And the text on the picture translates to, he created a woman, but he gave her free will. And this is based on the mythology of the name I can't pronounce, who was a sculptor that fell in love with the statue that he carved. And the poster itself is based off the 1927 film Metropolis, which was a German expressionist epic science fiction film set in the future, where wealthy industrious rule the vast city of Metropolis from high-rise tower complexes, while the lower class of the underground dwelling workers toll constantly to operate the machines that provide its power. So if you're ever wondering exactly what these posters are, now you know. It's pretty interesting. I always love when zombies ties in real life stuff. So now let's get into some of the more creepy stuff around the map. If you are in the dressing room and things are oddly quiet after you've hit the rock, because if you still have that 115 rock not activated, it's kind of hard to hear it. But if you come right up to this window, you can hear some thumping coming from inside one of the crates. And man, the amount of theories back in the day about this was just too many. And also, in each of the teleportation rooms, you can hear different things. If you go to Samantha's bad room, you can hear a bunch of whispering and you can hear people crying. And if you were in her good room, you can hear whispering and a child's nursery rhyme. And that child's nursery rhyme has also been in previous maps.
if you get teleported to the dentist chair room, you can hear a lot of the same noises like the screaming that you would have heard in Varuk. And if you were in the Pentagon room, you can also hear tons of whispering as well. Now, one of my favorite Easter eggs in Kino de Toten is the portraits. Taking the right side out of spawn, and you come up to these portraits, each character is going to have a quote about every single other person, including themselves. And back in the day, this was very, very useful because it gave us more insight onto how these characters interacted and their thoughts on each other. Maybe what was is no more, but shall be again. A picture of the ugly American. <laughs> He's so drunk, I can smell his breath through this portrait. This is a picture of a great warrior. Honor to the doctor. This one didn't photograph so well. Hello, Dempsey. Ah, it's just a portrait. An ugly one! His eyes are following me. Oh, it's a picture of the monkey bomb. Oh, look, it's me, but not quite as magnificent. Hey, look, it's nobody. Ah, a tale of two Dempseys. Start slow, but has a happy ending. Oh, looks like Nikolai's put on a few pounds. What's he been eating? Oh, our little bundle of badass. His portrait's bigger than everyone else's. Must be trying to compensate for something. Hey, someone stole the image from this picture. Hey, Dempsey, I think they got your bad side. Well, they do say the screen puts on 10 pounds. I hate you, Takeo. Richtofen looks a little younger in this painting. Now this wouldn't be a proper list if I didn't tell you guys how to activate the music easter egg. It's very very simple. There are three 115 rocks located throughout the map. All you gotta do is interact with every single one and the greatest music easter egg in zombies history will start playing. This has to be the last piece. I found the hidden song. Awesome. Now, if you were outside in the alley of Kino der Toad, and you look outside in the distance, you can see a giant tower. Well, this is actually the German TV tower, Fernsester, for this word, which was constructed between 1965 and 1969 by the government of the German Democratic Republic and or East Germany. And it was made to be a functional broadcasting facility and also a symbol of communist power. Also, if you've ever wondered what's on top of Kino, you know how when you turn on the power, things start crumbling and the Nova Crawler starts spawning from there? Well, if you no clip outside of the map and go to the roof, you can actually see some Nova Crawler dead bodies, and these are actually the spawn points for the Nova Crawlers. It really means next to nothing, but I just thought it was cool to show you guys. And the last thing that I have for you guys about Kino der Toten is this special sort of radio audio clip that you can only hear on the Wii version.
factories were ruined. At the same time, Mao announced another target for the Great Leap Forward. Steel production was to be doubled within one year. That production was traction not only from heavy industry complexes, but also from small furnaces and villages. As a result of communist ideology, Mao believed that workers' power held a magical force. With that decision, tens of millions of Chinese set out to produce steel by amateur methods. Everything made of iron they could find, from doorknobs to saucepans, was melted down in primitive furnaces in an effort to produce steel. Women cut off their hair and mixed it with the clay in the furnaces. Now, if we head over to 5, everybody probably knows about the Richthofen portrait that's in Pack-a-Punch. But did you also know that if you no clip through that very wall, you will see a picture of Tank Dempsey just chilling out? On the top floor of 5, there are plenty of pictures and images hanging on the walls. But one of them has a picture of the very same mission in World at War that you can get the ray gun in. This has nothing to do with anything, but I just thought it was fun. If you happen to be chilling out around this box location in the war room, occasionally on this television, the Eye of Providence will pop up, just giving you a nice little reminder that the Illuminati is still a thing. Down here in the labs, if we look outside of this barrier, you can find a bunch of things. You can find the very same canisters that were in Kino de Toad. You can see the Dura-Reese teleporter, the blueprint for the Ascension rocket, and also on this table, we have a ray gun that looks like it's getting reverse engineered. And right next to that window inside of this room, we can also see on the table a prototype Winner's Howl, a prototype Thunder Gun, Death Machine, HS-10, M16. There are just a bunch of weapons littered around this room that you can't touch. And there's also a bunch of other stuff from old zombie maps just littered throughout this entire map. We have a bunch of images from Shinonuma and Duris of dogs and zombies. We have tons of Duris chalkboards just thrown throughout the map, both inside of the map that you can actually see and outside of the map that normally you would never be able to see. Also, right here in spawn, we can find two of the notes that we also found in Kino der Toten, the Latin one and the letter that got mailed out. Also, if you come up to these metal detectors, which also happen to be the electric traps, on the top of them, you can see the Treyarch logo. Now, these traps are pretty interesting because technically, they are the very first buildable that we ever had in Zombies history. And to build them, all you have to do is find the batteries. One is located in the war room, and the other is located down in the labs. All you have to do is pick them up and place them inside of the trap. Now you have a fully working electric trap. And if we are playing around in Noclip and you Noclip out of spawn, you can come across a couple interesting things. One of them is the same wooden model that we find in the Samantha rooms from Kino der Toten. And another room also has the Ascension rocket and the Ascension blueprint hanging on the wall. And also right next to it is a magazine. And this magazine can also be found in Pack-a-Punch. But the interesting part about this magazine is it never originally looked like this. Originally, instead of it saying the space race and having the Ascension rocket on there, it said, what the hell is this, and had the Cosmic Silverback on it instead, but they eventually did change it. And I very distinctly remember them changing it, because I was playing 5, and one day I came to look at the paper, and I was like, wow, that's weird, I thought it was the monkey. And the next thing I know, for the rest of the time, it's the rocket, and I thought I was just going crazy, uh, but it turns out I wasn't. Now, the Pentagon Thief is very, very interesting. There are three ways to deal with him. Number one, he can take your gun and then you kill him. And if he does that, you will get your gun back and you'll get a fire sale and a max ammo. Number two, he can just take your gun and if you don't kill him, you'll never get the gun back, but you'll still get the max ammo. And number three, probably the best one, if you manage to kill him without him taking anybody's weapon, you will get a bonfire sale, which makes pack a bunch only 1,000 points, and you will also get a max ammo. And speaking of the Pentagon Thief, he has a couple interesting things written all over him. In the Illuminati code, he has Living Dead written on him. He has the Group 935 logo. He also has the Illuminati's logo and a bunch of just random science equations that I am not smart enough to know what they are whatsoever. But I still think it's interesting that he does have Illuminati writing on him. Now, probably everyone's favorite little Easter egg in 5 is the pig. If you come down to the labs and you come into this room, there's going to be a fully alive pig in here, and you can either kill him or spare him. Even to this day, people say if you kill the pig, zombies gets harder, and that's just not true at all. But if you do kill the pig, you're going to hell. That That's a fact. And the last thing on 5 is the music Easter egg. Around the map, there are three red phones. And if you hit all three red phones, the music Easter egg will start playing, and it's by Eminem, so I can't play it. I'll, I'll play the first five seconds for you. Here you go.
Now, if we head over to my personal favorite map, Ascension, there are tons of Easter eggs and just little things littered throughout this map. And the first one is actually before you even get into the map on the loading screen. If you look behind the rockets and the shadows, the shadows actually say 115. Now, if you don't know about this little mini Easter egg, then you just haven't played enough zombies. Now, located on Ascension, around the map, there are going to be three red telephones. And all you have to do is do certain things around these telephones to activate them, and they'll start ringing. And once they start ringing, you can actually answer the phone, and you will hear certain quotes from the characters on 5. So the first one is located right here in spawn, and all you have to do to get this one to start ringing is either activate the music Easter egg, or if you are playing solo, get 10 kills around it. And once you do that, it'll start ringing, and if you pick it up, you will hear a unique quote from President Kennedy. The next one is located over near Mule Kick right next to this box. All you have to do to get this one to start ringing is get a fire sale. And once you answer the phone, you will hear some unique dialogue from Nixon. And the last one is located over near PhD Flopper. And all you have to do to get this one to ring is get the ray gun from the mystery box. And once you do that, you can pick it up and you will hear a quote from Fidel Castro. Now the reason this easter egg was so significant and so interesting was because it gave us a time and a place on when ascension was taking place so ascension and five take place at the exact same time and it's little stuff like this and zombies that i just absolutely love now there are also four matryoshka dolls located around the map of the four main characters and going up and activating each one will give you some unique dialogue and give you more insight to how these characters view and interact with each other big gamsy you're so big ah. Don't breathe on me. Oh, hi, Takeo. <laughs> Stop tickling me. You ugly American. I will not work for you. Hold the emperor. Good day, doctor. Hey, good looking. Your breath smells like death. Hey, what's up, Tack? You suck, Richtofen. Oh, hi, Dempsey. Oh, you look just like my sister. Your eyes are empty, Takeo. I hate you, Richtofen. Now, my personal favorite Easter egg on Ascension is the rocket Easter egg. So once you get Pack Punch all linked up and you launch the rocket, you can destroy it. If you have a ray gun or really any explosive weapon, all you have to do is shoot the rocket as it's going up and it's going to explode. Now, that's badass and all, but the best part, probably the part you should always do it for, is if you head down to Pack Punch after you blew up the rocket, you will have a nice, fat, juicy double points waiting for you. I know, I know, Treyarch spoils us a little too much sometimes. But in all seriousness, it looks like Treyarch wanted to do a lot more with this easter egg, but either ran out of time, or just got bored, or lazy, or whatever the excuse is, and they ended up just giving you a double points instead of expanding on it. Now there's a lot of Russian writing on the walls, but there actually is some giant storage tanks located outside the map that do have some more writing on it, and it translates to infected control dissymmetry item and baby slash child, depending on what exactly you're using to translate it. And the control word that I can't pronounce is a device that's used to measure background radiation in a certain area. And I kind of find it interesting that they made this readable when it's really outside the map and you would never really see it it really makes you think if this is really that important or not now one thing about ascension that a lot of people might not know so have you ever seen the zombies do barrel rolls have you ever just seen them walking and then the second you try to shoot at them they barrel roll out of the way well that is because zombies in this map will actively try to get out of the way of your reticles so if you start aiming at a zombie they will actively try to get out of that way and the best way to see this and notice this is to get one zombie that's walking and just slowly move your sights right to him and he'll start dodging and ducking and trying to get out of the way and this is just something that i don't think a lot of people know about and it's the reason you will see a lot of zombies barrel rolling and dodging your bullets it's because they actually do try to get out of the way of your crosshairs now located around the map there are going to be multiple batteries laying on the ground and for the longest time people thought that these batteries were used in the continuation of the easter egg but by now we know that they're not but the batteries will say sparky on them and this is actually a reference to one of the developers alejandro romo whose xbox gamer tag or online handle was sparky or sparky mcsparks and i just love little easter eggs like this that give credit to the developers that made this game that we all know and love now have you ever wondered like the real life inspiration for ascension or where it takes place well you are in luck because people have figured that out it takes place in this russian word that i cannot pronounce cosmodrome which was the world's first and largest operational space launch facility. It's located in the deserts of Kazakhstan, about 124 miles east of the Aral Sea. 
It was originally built by the Soviet Union in the late 1950s as a base of operations for its space program. Under the current Russian space program, this place remains as a busy spaceport with numeral commercial, military, and scientific missions being launched annually. And it's pretty interesting because we do have a picture of it from August 5th of 1957 when an American U-2 spy plane took this photograph. And you can just see from this aerial photograph that it has tons of similarities between this and Ascension. And like I said, I really like how Zombies intertwines the storyline with real life and real events. And speaking of real events, do you know the mural located next to PhD Flopper that says CCCP and it's kind of blue and yellow? Well, that is actually based off a real monument. It's based off the Monument to the Conquerors of Space in Moscow. And in the game, it's just a tiny little wall thing, but in real life, it's a pretty big monument with multiple sides. And it's pretty easy to see that this is where they got the inspiration for the mural next to PhD Flopper because they look oddly similar. Now located all on the ground on Ascension, you will find all these little scraps of paper and they're really just copy and paste, but there is a little bit of information located on these scraps of paper. Right here you will see some Illuminati writing that says Moon, giving you a nice little hint on what's to come, and we also have the Eye of Providence making yet another return, always slightly reminding us that the Illuminati is there and watching. Now Ascension also introduced monkeys, and there are a couple ways that the monkey rounds can go down, and the monkeys themselves are fairly interesting. Even though they are incredibly annoying, they're still pretty interesting. When you throw a grenade at a monkey, it really won't affect them unless you time it just right, because they will just run over there, pick it up, and throw it right back at you, so you do have to be careful when it comes to grenades. And if you think the Gersh device is going to help you, well, it's really not because the monkeys will just jump through the Gersh device and get teleported somewhere else on the map and then come and kill you. And you better not let them touch a perk because if you can successfully keep the monkeys from touching any perk around the map, you will get rewarded with a free perk. But if they can manage to jump on one for long enough, they will end up stealing that perk. So the monkey rounds are, in my opinion, a high risk and high reward round. They give you a free perk and a max ammo, but they can also ruin your entire day. Now the last thing I got for you about Ascension is the music easter egg. Around the map there are three teddy bears. The first one is located in Spawn next to the Olympia. The next one is going to be located over near Speed Cola right next to the Lunar Lander. And the last and final one located behind this fence. And once you activate it, the music easter egg Abracadaver will start playing. Yeah, yeah, found the song, whatever. Now heading over to Call of the Dead, at one point during the easter egg you raise a submarine from the water, and if you've ever wanted a closer look at it, well here it is. You can see it's a you can see it's a Soviet submarine with a giant star on it, and the texture of it is low quality, it's like Nintendo 64 graphics, but of course that's because you were meant to see it from far away and not be a little shit like me and no clip to it. Also on Call of the Dead, next to the room where the main four are trapped in, there is a poster on the wall that looks like it has a Mayan calendar on it, and there's also some writing in Spanish. And the writing I can somewhat make out, and I believe it says, when the six, something something, are together, the power will be ours. And the rest of the writing on this poster I could not make out whatsoever, so if you are able to make it out, please let me know down there below in the comments. But the reason for this being Spanish is because at one point, Richthofen did have a Mexican test subject, Pablo. And unfortunately, due to unforeseen circumstances, he is no longer with us. So maybe this could just be a connection to that, or there is something more here that I do not know. The main boss for Call of the Dead is George Romero, and George Romero is very, very tanky. For every player, George Romero is going to have 250,000 points of health per every player. So if you have two players in it, he's going to have half a million, three players, three quarters of a million, and if you have four players, he will have a million points total of health. And there was a common rumor back in the day that George would regen health if he was outside of the water, which is just not true. His health will never regen, so he will only ever go down. And one interesting thing, despite the Wonder Wolf doing infinite damage, it only does one point of damage to George. So you can't technically damage him with the Wonder Wolf. You would, you would just need a lot of shots. And if you are able to kill him or make him go away without the VR-11, he will reward you with a free perk drop and a free death machine, or if you have done the Easter egg, you will get a Wonder Wolf instead. And as annoying as George is, I think the rewards you get for getting rid of him are just as good. So getting a free perk and a free Wonder Wolf, I think kind of makes up for the fact that He's an annoying giant shit walking around the map. Now, George Romero has tons of quotes in Call of the Dead, but I feel like you rarely ever get to hear any of these. So I got a bunch of the more interesting ones and compiled them all together. So if you're not a fan of quotes, skip ahead. But there's a lot of really cool ones that you really never hear in game. You're wasting your time. What makes you think I want to change? Ha! That won't work on me. Ha ha. 
This is who I'm meant to be. You actors don't know anything. You can't kill what's already dead. Oh my god. What have I done? Please, forgive me. I, I didn't know what was happening. Am I dreaming? Why can I taste blood? Did I do anything? Bad? What am I? Where am I? I'm the zombie granddaddy. I'm just not feeling this scene. That all you got? And they call you talent. Get them off my set! The curtain falls! I'm going to recast! Your heart's been cut! You've been recast! Welcome to the cutting room floor! Also located next to the trapped door, there is going to be a poster on the wall that is also a little easter egg referencing Avenge Sevenfold who also did the music easter egg on the map, and the music easter egg on the map is very easy to do. All you have to do is find three 115 rocks around the map. The first one is located in spawn. The second one is located next to PhD Flopper. And the last and final one is located on the ship right here in the booth. And once you do that, Not Ready to Die by Avenge Sevenfold will start playing. And of course, that's really copyrighted, so I can't let you guys listen to that. Now, speaking of Easter eggs, as you do the Easter egg and as you are communicating with the gang that's trapped behind the door, they will also have a ton of extra dialogue that's not really used in the Easter egg. That's just miscellaneous stuff that you could hear as you're walking next to the door. And there's about five minutes of it. So if you're not interested in dialogue, go ahead and skip now. But in my opinion, some of this is really funny. Some of this you rarely ever hear in game. And there's a lot of good, juicy storyline information in this. So I highly recommend you just sit here and listen to all five minutes. Hey, hey! Is anyone out there? We're stuck in this room! For the love of Rick Toppin! Just because the lights ain't on doesn't mean I can't kick your ass. Now get your finger out of mine! This force field is good for something after all. Keeping me separate from Mr. Touchy Feely over there. At least there ain't any fucking zombies in here. Feel like I'm on vacation. Butt maggots? Nah. Hmm. Freak Balls Boot Scrubber. Heh. <laughs> nah, that's lame. Zombitch? Uh, use that one already. Oh, Brain Dead Ass Fodder. Heh. <laughs> mm. uh, seems more like a catchphrase for Rick Toffin. Wonder how they'll get that bottle in here. <clears throat> oh. You know, sometimes I feel like I can't remember a time before the zombies. Wait, I really can't. <laughs> Maybe it's the vodka, or maybe not. You know, Tech, between you and me, there's just something off about that guy, you know? Oh, crap, my head. Now I get it why Nikolai never sobers up. Okay, put this piece there, that piece here, Hit this! What am I, a fucking knob jockey? Wait a second, why the hell is anyone trusting me to repair this thing? Oh boy, let's leave just to go on another wild goose chase. Only we're the geese, and the zombies are... Well, they're something. Wait, there's a saying in here somewhere. Isn't there? Little help? Hello? There is a Russian stuck in the room! This is not good! You know, I kept the power off for my entire first marriage. First wife looked like Nikolai too much! Ew. I can break these force fields with Russian head strike! <laughs> oh shit. Bad idea. Wait. My eyesight is clear. My hands do not shake. I can form coherent thoughts! Ah! I'm... sober! Ugh. I smell vodka and it's close! I need that bottle! How will they get it to me? <laughs> Everything is right again! <laughs> yeah. Takio, you cannot handle your vodka! Here, hand some more! Hey, hang on to your, your vomit. There's vodka. Everyone else is done drinking? 
Hey, more for Nikolai! You know, Takio, you're such a great listener. But you still fuck monkey! <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> He's going to be sad to leave this tiny, tiny room. Richtofen, I hope you're leading us towards more vodka and less zombies. Excuse me, is there anyone out there that would be willing to help? Hello? It's so dark and quiet. Anyone up for a game? It's situations like this that make me wish I hadn't raised their... Um, I mean... Barshfield, Barshfield, stuck behind a Barshfield. <laughs> Do you know that tune? Remember, if you have to go to the party, I have designated this corner the party corner. Meaning that if you have to party in a corner, this would be the corner that you would party in. Number one or two is acceptable. Uh, this is my personal hell. Stuck in a room with these three and no zombies to dismember. I hope they can figure out how to use that tube. One more piece after this. Just one more piece and the world can be mine. <laughs> oh, I mean... Boschfield! Boschfield! I'm not stuck behind a Boschfield! They sound like they're having so much fun out there! Oh, I just want to see one zombie die! <laughs> just... <laughs> Hi, Takeo! Yeah, how you doing? See all the puke that we're picking up? You're not saying thank you? Nothing? You know why? Because you're a little shit! So close now. So very close. <laughs> I'm almost glad that we're stuck in here. That way there's nothing to jog their memories. The real generator will be mine! Then there is only one more thing I need! <laughs> One of the wonder weapons introduced in Call of the Dead was the VR-11, which when used will turn a zombie into a human, and that human kind of acts like a monkey bomb and all the zombies run towards him. But once you upgrade this thing, it goes from being one of like the worst wonder weapons of all time to one of the best as long as you're not playing solo. Once you upgrade it, it still does the same old thing where it turns a zombie into a human and the zombies all chase it. And also if you shoot that human three times, he'll explode and kind of do some damage to nearby zombies. Both of those two things are absolutely useless. The best part about this wonder weapon is if you have a friend in the match and you shoot your friend, the friend basically gets insta-kill and the zombies will ignore him. So you can kind of imagine just how good this would be for going for high rounds. And also this thing can get rid of George or Mare when it's upgraded. All you have to do is shoot George when he's in the water and it'll go away. So co-op wise, this might be one of the greatest wonder weapons of all time, but solo wise, it's, it's useless. And one little quick thing that I did find, like in previous maps, like in Kino and 5, we found those letters that were mailed out. And I also found one on Call of the Dead, but I could not read it at all. I don't think this one was ever meant to actually be read. I got a sniper, couldn't see anything. So if you are able to manage to make out the words on this, please let me know. Now, when you think Call of the Dead, you usually don't think creepy vibes or creepy atmosphere, but that is exactly what some of the ambient sounds try to give you. And in fact, it's so creepy that Warzone actually used this very soundtrack for one of its Halloween events. last little interesting thing I got for you is kind of the location for Call of the Dead. It takes place near the Russian words Tunguska River, which is where the Tunguska event happened in 1908, which was when a giant meteor came down and crashed into the earth. And in the zombie storyline, that meteor contained 115, and back in the day, you would see so much wall writing just saying Tunguska. 
Shangri-La probably had the least amount of information that I could find about it, but it still has a lot of interesting stuff. Like, did you know that you can actually get a free perk in Shangri-La, but it's very, very difficult? All you have to do is use the monkeys to your advantage. So when you normally get a drop, the monkeys will scramble to take it, grab it, and take it back to Pack-a-Punch. And as they are doing that, they will constantly change the drop. Well, if you let them do that to a max ammo, for like a fraction of a second, they will have a perk drop. And if you can manage to kill them while they have that, you will get a free perk. Now, like I said, it's very difficult. In all my years of playing zombies, I have never once done this legit. And even trying for this video, I was unable to do it, knowing full well that that's exactly what I was trying to do. Maybe it's just a skill issue, I don't know. But I'm going on record saying that this is one of the hardest free perk Easter eggs out there. Now, a lot of people might know about this, mainly because of the recent videos that Glitching Queen has been putting out, but in the files, these mountains over here are referred to as Mars, and I will link Glitching Queen's video down below in the description because I think it's just really interesting and fascinating. But it seems like the zombie storyline back in the day was going to take a much different direction than the one it did. Jimmy Zelensky might have wanted to do a lot more tie-ins with Mars and just take the story in a completely different direction. And if you want more information on that, go check the link in the description. The Shrink Ray is one of my personal favorite wonder weapons. I think it's just fascinating and it's really, really fun to use. But saying that, it's not completely safe. It can still cause you to go down if you're not paying 100% attention. Once you make a baby zombie, the zombie can still kill you. It still does damage to you, although it takes a lot. So a baby zombie will take 15 hits to down you. That's if you don't have Jug. But where the problem comes in is if they can get a couple hits on you and then they grow up and then continue hitting you, they can actually down you very, very fast. And this has happened to me on multiple high round runs. So just throwing it out there, the Shrink Ray is technically one of the best wonder weapons in Black Ops 1, if not the best, but it still can be kind of dangerous if you're not really paying attention. And also, the name itself, 3179JGB215, can actually be translated into coordinates. If we take J, G, and B, and use their number in the alphabet, so J is the 10th letter in the alphabet, and we do the same for G and B, we can transfer that into coordinates, and those coordinates will actually take you to the Himalayas. So this gives us a rough idea on where exactly Shangri-La could be taking place. Another little interesting easter egg in Shangri-La is if you take the minecart, you will hear the lullaby that we have been hearing in zombies for a very, very long time. Yes, faster. There is also an easter egg, I think this only works on Xbox, it might work for PlayStation because I know damn well it does not work on PC, where if the player stands at a certain spot and then does up, up, down, A on their controllers, the monkeys in the room will start exploding. And unfortunately, I don't own a console, so I have never been able to do this Easter egg, but it's one of those Easter eggs that didn't get solved for many, many years after the map's release. This isn't really anything special, but I always love doing it. In the waterfall, there is a brick that hangs out, and if you press F on it, which it tells you do not do it, more water will start coming out and it can sweep zombies down. It really doesn't do much and it's kind of pointless. The only real use of it is in the Easter egg, but I still think it's pretty interesting and I like little things like this in zombies. And lastly, the music Easter egg can also be activated by hitting three 115 rocks around the map. The first one is located right here in spawn. The next one is located by this perk machine to the right or left of the map, depending on which way you go. It's, it's located right here. And the last and final one is located down in the mines, kind of hidden away and located right here. And once you activate all of them, Paradolia will start playing. They keep hiding the soldier and fight. Fight! Now, last but not least, let's head over to Moon and finish this off. With Moon, we got introduced to the Astronaut Zombie. And the Astronaut Zombie is pretty unique because the name that appears above it will differ depending on if you're playing solo or with friends. And if you're playing solo, it'll be picked from a predetermined list of names. But if you are playing with friends, whoever the host is, it'll be someone off their friends list or someone they recently played with. And also the astronaut's health can get pretty tanky the higher and higher rounds you go. So already the astronaut's health is four times stronger than that of a regular zombie. And as you get higher and higher rounds, his health will just naturally get higher and higher. And if you're playing with more people, that health will also increase. But have no fear, if you do not kill the astronaut from round one, he'll only have round one health. But the second you kill him and then he spawns back in, that's when things get difficult. Also with Moon, we got introduced to the QED, the Quantum Entanglement Device, and there are so many effects with this, and I'm just reading this straight off the wiki because I'm not gonna lie, I didn't know majority of these, so I'm assuming these are all correct, but it's the internet, take it with a grain of salt. Would people really go on the internet and just tell lies? 
But the QED's effects are as followed, an explosion identical to that of the astronaut zombie. It can produce a ray gun or an upgraded one that fires in a circle. It can do the same with a China Lake, an M72 Law, Python, a Spaz, and a CZ-75 or dual-wield CZ-75s. It can revive a teammate. It can also down a teammate. It can spawn a power-up of a random gun on the map, either regular or pack-a-punched. It can spawn a Gersh device power-up for anyone to take, and it can also refill Gersh devices if the player already has them. And it can also do the same with a QED power-up. It can open doors, but it can also close them. It can produce a chain similar to that of a Wonderwolf DG2, and it can also do the same thing with a Scavenger Shot, and it can also do the same with Matryoshka dolls. It can produce frag grenade explosions, and it can also make a Gersh device black hole. And it can also spawn a Simtex and a frag grenade. It can teleport players within a vicinity to a random location. It can spawn a Carpenter, a Nuke, an Insta-Kill, and a Double Points, and a Perk Bottle, and also an Anti-Perk Bottle, which if you grab, will take a perk. And it can also do the same thing with Bonus Points, a Fire Sale, and a Max Ammo. It can spawn in a Death Machine. It can also spawn in more zombies. It also has a chance to convert the player's weapon into a Pack-a-Punched one, and can also do the opposite and revert it from Pack-a-Punch to the original. If you throw it at a perk machine, it can give all the players a free perk. And last but not least, it can also be a dud and do nothing. And also with Moon, we got introduced to the Hacker. And with the Hacker, you can hack multiple different things. You can hack Pack-a-Punch to get the gate to close and get a thousand points. You can activate the excavator controls to get some money. You can hack doors to make them cheaper. You can hack windows to get some more money. But if you do too many windows, you'll end up losing money. You can hack players to transfer money. You can hack mystery boxes to get cheaper spins or to keep the mystery box from going to a certain location. You can hack wall guns to get cheaper upgraded ammo. You can hack perk or coal machines to get refunds. And you can also hack power-ups. If you hack a regular power-up, you will get a max ammo. And if you hack a max ammo, it will turn into a fire sale. But that costs 5,000 points, and that's very, very expensive. Now let's change gears a little bit and go to the loading screen. Now there's tons on here that I could dissect, but honestly, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. But the one thing that I feel like a lot of people missed back in the day was right here on the bottom. And this text right here that's pretty illegible it actually says have fun with papa in poland mommy will miss you but she has work to do in dresden and if you don't know what this is talking about this is actually talking about samantha's mother i remember back in the day theories about how she died and hearing people say that she died in dresden but never seeing the proof to back it up and this right here was how we got that information and if you do not know what Dresden was, Dresden was a city that the Allies bombed into oblivion. And after the war, a lot of controversy started popping up about whether it was justifiable on bombing it. But it seems like Treyarch originally wanted Samantha's mother to be one of the casualties of Dresden and eventually changed it because I guess no one could read it because, I mean, how could you read it? Look at that. That's basically unreadable, especially for back in like 2010. So it seems like they originally wanted Samantha's mom to die in Dresden, but eventually ended up changing it to make her die during childbirth. And speaking of loading screens, when Treyarch uploaded their video Treyarch Zombies A Brief History, they gave us a glimpse at a different moon loading screen with some minor differences here and there. And maybe one day I'll make a video where I dissect this entire loading screen and go through every image and show you guys what exactly it says, but that would make this video just so much longer and it's already long enough. Also, probably one of the most known facts about Moon is that it originally was supposed to be Paris. Moon was originally going to be the infamous Paris map, but at the last second they decided to change it up and go bigger with the map instead of just doing it in Paris. But one of the cool things about it is in the game files, Moon is still referred to as Paris. So like I always say, maybe one day we'll get that elusive Paris map. Now one thing I like about Moon is that there's multiple music easter eggs on this map. One of the more interesting ones is the Avenged Sevenfold one. And to do this, all you have to do is get the achievement One Giant Leap. And to do that, all you have to do is in Moon become trapped in the receiving area and free yourself through Resurrection and Co-op. So that means you have to get yourself trapped by the excavators and then die and then respawn with your buddies and then the music easter egg will start. So it's a little bit of a sacrifice, but I mean, you get a cool music easter egg. Why wouldn't you do it? And there's also a ton of other 8-bit musical easter eggs. There is a remake of Damned called Redamned, and this one is activated by going up to the computer in the labs next to the biodome and activating it and the music will start playing.
The next one is an 8-bit version of Coming Home, and this one is located in Tunnel 11. All you really have to do is listen for like this R2-D2 sound, and you'll know which computer you have to hit. And the last one is an 8-bit version of Paradolia, and this one is also in the lab over here in this corner. And again, go up to the computer, activate it, and the song will start playing. Now for the main music easter egg, all you have to do is find three teddy bears with little astronaut helmets around the map. The first one is located right underneath spawn, the next one is going to be located in tunnel 6, and the other one is located in tunnel 11, and if you hit all three of these, you will hear the music easter egg coming home. Check it out, a new ditty by Elena and Kevin. Thank you, Treyarch. One thing that I think Moon doesn't get enough credit for is the overall atmosphere that it gives you. Just sitting around the map and listening, you can get a good feel for the ambience and the overall mood that it's trying to put you in, and it can be kind of creepy. Once you start listening to this, it really just makes you question your life and the universe as a whole. They did a fantastic job with some of the background noise. And to end off, because I don't want this video to be any longer than it has to be, because we're already way longer than I was expecting it to be, if you happen to die on Moon, instead of hearing a Game Over song, you just get these two laughs.